I want to just quickly review what we did yesterday. Of course, there is a, a recording available, but the first section of this section um, asked you to say, okay, take a look at how a partnership is formed, what the partners bring to the table at what they would consider a book value, and then from there they kind of hash out the, well, your equipment's worth more or less, or Whew, you have all that AR, I think that the allowance needs to be increased or decreased. And they arrive at a, a common ground to set their fair, fair value, what then in turn gets journalized. I thought the book did a nice job of saying what is included and what's not included with capital coming in. Remember, each of these assets do have a contra asset. It's just one of them's included, one's not. You start a clean slate with accumulated depreciation. It's still the pile still grows, it's just you start with nothing. Um, then as we take a look at how do we actually form the partnership and create the capital account, uh, one of the partners had cash and equipment to force a number for his or her capital, and this other partner brought in accounts receivable, but that contra asset is listed for their capital. And we did a couple exercises, they were very easy, I thought. Um, so now let's get into the next section of the chapter where we talk about year-end stuff. We've had a year's worth of activity. How do we then share the net income or loss? Because before it was easy, it was just the one owner. Now we have multiple players involved here. So partners equally share net income and loss unless their initial like, contract says otherwise meaning, oh, I'm going to be in a 70%, Ashley's a 30% partner. Then, of course, I would only get, you'd only get 30% of the net income, I'd get 70. On the flip side, if we have a loss, I take a bigger hit, okay? If you recall closing entries, where we are closing or zeroing out things like revenue, expenses, income summary, and drawing, do you guys remember doing that? Like that seems like a really long time ago, but let's just quickly play that out. Remember we had sales, we had expense, expense, expense. Do you guys have this teeny tiny little thing down there? Okay. So when you closed sales, you had a credit with a number. To wipe that out and to get it to be zero, we had to debit a number. Well, if you debit something, what's, what else has to go with that transaction? A credit and that comes over here with an account that is only used on one day of the fiscal year income summary so that was to close sales all of our expenses have debit balances with numbers in them so if we want to wipe those out and get them to zero we'd have to credit a number well, if we have three credits, we'd collectively put one debit up here. Okay. So we've closed revenue, we've closed expenses. Now we need to close this income summary, which is kind of a holding tank to determine if we have a net income or loss. It took me one whole day to describe what I just did, and we did it in like two minutes. Okay. Um, as we try to figure out if we've had an income or loss, are sales larger than expenses? And if they are, we have a net income number. Our, we're trying to get these two to equal, which is essentially the same as zeroing them out. That one debit typically was shared in the owner's capital account. But what's complex about this chapter? There's two owners. Okay, we have two owners instead. So the one debit is going to have to get shared between the two owners. So I'm gonna just say net income, net income. If we had net income of $1,000 and they're a 50-50 partner, so if net income was 1,000, each partner would get their 500 part of that division of net income. That's contradicted with the drawing Remember we closed drawing as well. 
but we have two forms of drawing. We have each partner. Those typically have a debit balance. So we credit the number to get it to zero. <clears throat> and then we offset the capital with the debits. So depending on how much money each owner took out in drawing, that will affect their share of net income. So that's closing all of the books. It's just that it's more complex because in this case there are two owners. And depending on their ratio of a 50-50, a 70-30, a 40-60 split, that capital has to get into their, or their net income has to get into the capital in some way, shape, or form. Speaking of income ratios, okay, um, partnership agreements should specify at the time of formation how they are going to share hopefully their net income or share their net loss. You can look at income ratios a number of ways. We'll talk about all the bulleted listed points there. But typically, in the book talked about this, you either see proportion ratios, where it's like a six to four split. You see percentage ratios, where it'd be like a 60 to 40% split. So it's basically the same thing. Or, of course, fraction ratios, where it'd be like two thirds and one third, or whatever the case is. So you, you look at it, of course, if it would be 50 50, it'd be one to one, or 50 50 percent, fraction one half, one half. Okay. You can base the ratios as a fixed ratio. You could base them off of whatever our capital balances are. You can also pay your partners a salary, and then that offsets, and that's, and that's what we're going to do here in just a minute. So you say, okay, we're going to pay each of you, but then whatever is left over in net income, then we will use a fixed ratio to divide that. Or you can take a look at their capital balances and give them interest on whatever's sitting there. Or you can do a combination of all of it. Pay your partners, their interest on the capital, and then whatever's left over would be a fixed ratio. That last one is what we are going to do. So let's take a peek at this. King and Lee are co-partners in a da -da 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 company. I hope this is in your notes. It's probably really little, but it's in your notes, correct? The partnership agreement, so at the time of formation, the legal paperwork says three things. <clears throat> Number one, they are getting a salary allowance. King is going to make $8,400. Lee is only going to make 6000 I don't know why. Maybe King works more. Uh, there's, um, maybe he put more money up at the front end. Who knows? We're not going to sit and analyze why there's a difference, but just they're saying, number one, here's what they're making for a salary. Number two, the second way that these partners are going to make money, because they already get a salary in number one, number two is they're going to have um, a 10% interest allowance on their capital balances. So whatever they have in their capital, they get to keep 10% of that. And finally, they are going to share net income equally, a 50-50 split. This is complicated. Why not just share the net income and not worry about it? But they're saying we want to pay them. We want to give you a 10% sort of bonus on your capital uh, account. And then whatever's left over for net income, after we've paid you and after you've gotten that, then you can share that 50-50. So then they give you some detail. Capital balances as of January 1 were 28000 and 24000 So they are going to get 10% of that. 
In 2012, they had $22,000 in net income. And the division of net income is as follows. They are asking us to basically break that down on a schedule and then journalize it. So we have a lot of work to do. Because we're paying them, they're getting a 10% interest on their 28,000 and their 24,000, plus there's some net income that they're gonna share equally. This is considered a schedule. Do you guys have the schedule on there? It's gotta be really small, okay? Uh, the, the star here is $22,000 worth of net income. That's an that's a important piece. And Sarah King and Ray Lee each have factors that play into this. Their salary allowance is one factor. Their interest on their capital is another one. And then whatever's left over for net income, they're gonna share equally, okay? Because if I go back, there was the A, there was the B there, and, and there was the C. It was said, or it was decided, that Sarah King is making $8,400. That's her salary. Plus what Ray Lee is making for a total of $14,000 that we are paying our partners a wage or a salary. Okay, that's one. That's easy. Then Sarah Lee or Sarah King, sorry, Sarah Lee is the bread company and the pie company. Sarah King has a $28,000 balance times 10% because that's her interest allowance on her capital. That equals $2,800. Ray Lee has a $24,000 times 10%. He gets $2,400. So 28 plus 24 equals $5,200. So again, let's stop. Let's go back. We have these three factors. We've done salary. We've done interest. Now it's time to share the net income. Here's the deal though. They've been, I, I hate to use the word greedy, but they don't have much net income left because we've paid them a salary, we've given them the 10%. So now instead of looking uh, horizontally, let's look vertically. Sarah Lee, oh gosh, I called her Sarah Lee again, Sarah King has chomped up 22 or 11,200 of the 22. Ray Lee has chomped up 8,400 of the 22. And if we take a look at it, out of the 22, they've eaten up 19,600. They, they, it was still a $22,000 net income. It's just that their salary allowance ate up a little bit, their interest allowance on their capital have eaten up a little bit, actually quite a bit. Because if we take a look at the 22,000 minus the 19,6, there's not much left for them to play with. Out of their 22,000, they only have 2,400 to share equally. So that's where you get the 12,000 here, or excuse me, 1,200 and 1,200, because it's Here's your net income minus what they already chomp, 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 chomped up. And they eat rightfully so. They're the partners. They probably have a family and need to pay, you know, buy groceries and have a salary allowance. And they get another little interest allowance on the capital. But at that point, the 22 minus 19.6, each partner really only has $2,400 as leftover residual of the net income. So then it breaks down into... And then 12, 4 plus 9, 6 equals 22,000. No, it doesn't. 19 plus 24, sorry. I did that wrong. So 
the, sim the simple answer is this. We're giving them a salary allowance. We're giving them an interest allowance. Whatever is remaining, we're going to give them their net share of net income. That's the simple answer. One, two, three things based off of that star at the top, net income. So now, at, this was part A. Prepare the schedule. And again, it's all on page 5, 75, and 76. It, gives, it breaks it all down again if you want to review. But now let's journalize this. Okay. If you think back to the closing entries when you were rocking the little income summary for the closing entries, 22000 was the net income. This would be step three of four on the closing entry list. Sarah King got 12,400. Ray Lee got 9,600. Let's stop and think about the three factors that got to those numbers. First of all, here they are right down here. That's what actually gets journalized. That's their share of the 22,000, okay? Where did they come from? Remember, each of them had um, a salary allowance. These numbers came from salary allowance, a 10% interest on their capital accounts, and a 50-50 split of any, and the key word here is remaining net income. We know that this, you could even put NI right behind there, that's net income, okay? And these numbers came from a little bit of money for salary allowance, 10% on their capital, and whatever's left, they shared equally. Do you think this is complicated when there's a net loss? Yes. How about a net income, but A and B, they got a little greedy. You can have a net income, but A and B make it go to where it's like a net loss because they overpaid themselves and they overcompensated on capital interest. We'll tackle that if there's time. What I want to stop and do is brief exercise 12.3 and 12.4 while we're talking about it and while it's fresh. If we have time to analyze what all this looks like, if we, number one, have a net loss, or number two, we get a little bit greedy with our allowances, salary, interest, We'll do that today. If not, we'll back that up to Monday. At the end of the day, partnerships are complicated. Um, partnerships can be messy, and they can end poorly. Uh, but on the flip side, they're awesome because one, one partner's strength might be the other partner's weakness. So. Let's do exercise, brief exercise 12.3. These are a few of them from yesterday. The brief exercise 12.3 is right here. Rod Dahl Company reports net income of 75000 the income ratios are Rod 60% and Dal 40%. Indicate the division of net income to each partner and prepare the distribution of net income. So apparently we're not horsing around with in, um, salary allowances or income interest percentages on capital. So. They first tell you the breakdown. <clears throat> Here's our net income. We have a 60-40 split. The entry would be, what's our debit when we're dividing our net income? It's step three of four on the closing entries. 
income summary, which I would strongly suggest you put NI or net income behind, just so you kind of remember that. And each partner's share. <clears throat> you could even put 60% here and 40% for Dow. Now that's the really easy version. We didn't have to do a schedule because it didn't talk anything about salaries. It didn't talk anything of percentage of capital. They just decided they're keeping the whole net income. Apparently they weren't paid on those other two pieces. As we take a look at our next brief exercise, uh, brief exercise 12-4, I want to see what it looks like in your workbooks. Oh, it's nice. Do we have four? Oh, we have three partners? Oh, golly. Okay, here we go. <laughs> PFW, I would assume there's a P and an F and a W. Hmm, these are pretty creatively named. PFW company reports net, count, net income of 45 grand. Okay, that's the star of the show here. Get that somewhere on the top, front and center. $45,000 of net income. Here's what you need to know. The business generated net income. Even if the partners get greedy. I don't think they get greedy yet. We're going to get into that here if we have time later today. We have our three partners, Pitts, Filbert, and Witten. There are potentially three factors here. What's one of them? I think there's only two, but let's just talk about the three. What, what eats away at net income? If they have a salary, if they do a interest percentage on capital, whatever is left, then they'll share the net income, okay? I think we're only doing two of the three, though. Partner salary allowances are 15, 5, and 5. Indicate the net income of each partner, assuming the ratio is 50, 30, 20. I want you to write that. 50, 30, 20. Now, we're not going to stop and analyze why poor Witten doesn't get much. Maybe Witten doesn't, isn't very present or didn't sh show up to the table with much at the beginning. So we don't, we don't know why it's the split, but let's just get used to the split, okay? <clears throat> In the bio, it looks like we only have two of the three factors. It looks like we're paying them a salary and whatever's left over is net income. Would you agree that that's how it reads? Okay, so first let's get in their salary allowance. You're going to want to write salary allowance on that line. Is there a line to write that? Hopefully, okay. Pitts gets 15, Filbert gets 5, Witten gets 5. It set it right in the bio. We didn't have to calculate anything. They could be mean and have us go back to our old chapter of payroll and say, they worked X amount of hours at this hourly rate. Ooh. 15 plus 5 plus 5 equals 25. Do they still have $45,000 of net income to play with? No. Again, we could call it greedy or we could call them just, hey, we want a salary. But they've chomped, chomped, chomped up that 45000 by 25000 Okay. I like that they said this, remaining income, 20000 because here was their net income minus their salaries. I'd write that in somewhere because you might say, hmm, where did that come from? So their original star of the show, 45000 was chomp, chomp, chomped up by the 25000 that they paid themselves. 
typically we'd stop and say, all right, here's a percentage of our capital, but these partners didn't set up their partnership that way. So now we've got this $20,000 that's remaining. Remaining net income is 20,000. Pitts gets 50% of that. So he gets 10 grand. Philbert only gets 30% of it. Five grand, or excuse me, six grand. And finally, Witten, only 20% of it. Four grand. Here's where we can stop and say, all right, what did each partner take from net income. Their division of net income factors in salary and whatever was remaining. The cool part is the 25 plus 20 is kind of a nice checkpoint because that number should match the star up there on top. I think the book does a nice job laying this out. Would you agree? What factors missing in this one? They didn't take into account what? Interest on capital. I hope it asks us to journalize. No, it doesn't, but let's do it anyway. Do you have a little bit of room somewhere in a margin or somewhere? Let's journalize this transaction, even though the book didn't ask us to, okay? What's our debit when we're sharing net income? Income summary. was 45,000. Kits capital. I'm going to put a 50% behind there so I remember that that's their breakdown. Philbert's capital. And Witten capital. They are getting a salary out of that money and the remainder of net income. I know you can't read that, but I think it's important to just remind yourself where those numbers came from. Their net income, or excuse me, their <clears throat> salary and then whatever was left with net income. So unlike the problem we did before, excuse me, the brief exercise, they didn't, all that was, that was exclusively remainder of net income, okay? These partners decided we are going to pay you and then whatever else remains is net income. We obviously have time, so let's go back to our student notes, go back to the PowerPoint. I'm going to illustrate what happens if they either have a net loss or they overpay themselves. Okay, um, I know it's getting confusing because we're popping between net incomes, but these two partners originally had a $22,000 net income. Okay, they originally had a $22,000 net income. 
In this one, they're saying, mm, let's assume it's only 18. And what does this look like, okay? So remember how there was the salaries and the interest? They paid themselves, they had 10% of their capital, so they still were coming in with 11, two, and 84. Remember how we got those numbers? Okay, it was the same problem before. So those two equaled the 19.6. That wasn't a problem when we made $22,000 of net income. Why is it a problem now? We, take, we, are t we, we paid them more than what we actually had in net income. Okay, it was not a problem when we made 22 because 19.6, that's where we had the $2,400 remainder. Well, now our problem is, this is not seen as a net loss, okay, because we had a net income. It's just that we paid them too much in salaries and that 10% interest. So instead of a remaining income, notice what it says. It's a remaining deficiency. If we paid them and gave them interest on capital of 19.6, but we only made 1,800, we see a deficiency of 1,600. We still gotta share that two ways. And these guys are a 50-50 split. So Sarah, Ki Sarah King sees an $800 loss, Ray Lee, sees an $800 loss. And then when it all shakes out, we get back to our star of $18,000. So it's not a net loss, because they had a net income. It's just that they paid themselves too much. Notice it's not called a loss, it's called a deficiency. What does this look like on the financial statements? Okay. <clears throat> Notice this is a owner's capital statement. So you have balance sheet, income statement, owner's capital, owner's equity statement, stuff like that. You take a look at beginning, anything that came in, anything that came out, and then what was their ending capital, okay? So originally it had told you that each partner came in with 28 and 24,000. Apparently there was an additional investment by one of the owners, I guess I didn't ever see that, plus their share of net income. Again, how did we get at those numbers? It was this. It was all this, the 12, four and the nine, six. That's where we got those numbers. <clears throat> Apparently each owner withdrew money so they don't get to keep that. Getting you to their ending amount. You take these ending amounts and transfer them to the owner's equity section of the balance sheet. So these are pulled from the owner's equity statement. You probably remember doing that long ago. My gosh, that was like Thanksgiving time we were doing stuff like that. So these are forced from somewhere else. You'll notice what this little bio says down here. The balance sheet of a partnership is the same as a sole proprietorship. It's just there's more than one owner. So they have to divide it out by owner or partner. 
Let's do 12.5 quickly together. I guess I'm impressed with how much we've gotten done today here. Sorry, I got to get rid of all my notations here. Can you already tell we have a deficiency just by looking at the answer key? All right. Same thing, we're going to get some things labeled. What is our net income on 12.5? How much? Reporting 31,000, so there's our star. Let's get that up there. 31,000 is kind of what we're basing everything off of. Remember, we can have potentially three things that affect it. Did we pay our employees? So a salary, or our partners, excuse me. Um, do they get any interest on their capital? And finally, what's their remaining net income or what's their remaining deficiency that they have to cover? Okay, how many partners do we have this time? Two, NAB and Fry. <clears throat> NAB. And Fry share everything equally. So they are a 50 50 split. Let's first see if we paid them. Sure enough, we did. Salary allowance. We paid NAB 15, we paid Fry 20. So do we still have 31,000 of our um, net income to play with? Not anymore because they each had a salary. If we had to stop there, what's 25 or 31 minus 25? Six grand. Is that right? Yeah. It appears we are also going to give them an interest allowance on their capital accounts. Well, we better figure out what that is. Oh, it even just straight up tells you. It doesn't even make you do math. It says interest allowances are NAB 7, FRI 5. That is based on, typically, I'm surprised they didn't make us do this, a percentage of their capital balances at the beginning of the year. So what did you come in with for the year? We're going to give you a percentage of it. They just told us the numbers. Twenty five plus twelve is of course thirty seven thousand. Ouch, what happened? Paid them too much. Who paid them too much? They paid themselves too much. They're the partners, okay? So we have a deficiency of six grand because 31,000 minus 37,000 is of course a deficiency of six grand. Again, we had a net income. So don't think of it as we lost money. It's just that point A and point B, we paid them out too much. So now we've got to split this 6,000, kind of like a net loss. Think of this deficiency as a net loss a cousin to net loss. So here's when we take NAB and FRY, they've got to share it equally. It's just that it's a negative instead of a positive because they've got too much of a salary or too much of an interest allowance. They're still doing okay though. I don't know, this seems kind of weird, total remainder. Did we do that on the last one like that? I don't think so. What I'm more interested in is the vertical. How do we get to 19 and 12? Remember, this is an awesome checkpoint.
point because 19 plus 12 equals 31. Going back to, yep, we did our math right. They're still doing okay. It's just that we we paid them too much in a salary and an interest allowance, so they didn't have any net income left. It was a deficiency. But what happens here before we start sharing the net income is this. We have to stop and see what we pay them, and that number better be under the net income, otherwise it's considered a deficiency. Again, we probably don't, they don't ask for a journal entry, but let's do one anyway. We did make money. came from salaries, interest on capital, and their net income. But it was a deficiency because we overpaid them in the other two factors. Does that feel good, feel easy? Do you see why I didn't rush into this though yesterday when we had a few minutes to spare before the Vikings thing? Taylor. Yes, because I pulled right from here, 19 and 12. Good question. Basically, this line is what gets journalized. Even though the book wasn't asking for journal entries, I think it was a good re reminder to do that. So Monday when you come, oh my gosh, the last regular week of accounting, crazy. Uh, when we come, when you come on Monday, we're going to talk about, we've talked about how they're organized. We're ta we've talked about how they share net income. Now it's time to talk about when a partnership liquidates or dissolves. A partner dies, a partner withdraws, we add a new one. Okay, so when they change. Um, we'll get through that in the end of chapter stuff, no problem. No homework over the weekend. <laughs>